What up everyone, my name for this channel is VillainFX, which is my nickname in the No Nonsense Forex Discord server. Feel free to reach out there if you have any questions. So the purpose of this series is for anyone that has gone through all of VP's content, No Nonsense Forex, and are either new to building algos or haven't had much luck creating their own algo. I hope by showing you exactly how I build an algo, it might help fill in any gaps, questions, or misunderstandings you may have. For anyone that's not familiar with the No Nonsense Forex trading strategy, either the YouTube channel or VP's site, nonsenseforex.com, I'll leave links in the description, and I recommend you check them both out, hands down best Forex related content you ever find. And if you've already consumed all of VP's content, I would also like to recommend the new podcast, No Nonsense Forex, Refined, by Dylan Gresh and Judge FPV, who they both gave me the inspiration to make this series. So give them a sass and like and subscribe to Dylan's channel. Now, I want to take this time to mention our goal. Our end goal is to live trade, or at the very least, forward test our strategy. The whole purpose for doing any back testing is to eventually get to that live trading or forward testing phase. So keep that in mind as we move forward. And the last point I want to add before going to the chart is that our back testing doesn't give us an accurate idea of live trading in the future. So back testing statistics are good for two things. Number one is comparing changes. So whether we want to add a new piece to our already finished algo, whether it be a C1, C2 volume, money management, or nuances, we want to compare how these pieces affect our algo. So whether they make it worse or make it better. In other words, we're trying to maximize profits and minimize losses through looking at the statistics. And the second thing that backtesting statistics are good for is telling us if the algo could be profitable when traded live. Since they're hugely inaccurate, we take the figures with a grain of salt. But we can plainly see if an algo has been profitable on past data or if it's returned a negative ROI. Please re-listen to that a few times so that you understand what we need to be focusing on throughout the algo build. So let's find our first indicator. Obviously, the first strategy to find indicators is Google. MT4 indicators, you might may have come across this site. MQR5, make sure you click code base at the top. And MetaTrader 4 or MetaTrader 5, whichever you're using, you have thousands and thousands of indicators to choose from and test. And this is, I guess, the most basic and um, straightforward way to look for indicators. You find one you may like, click on it, download, opens the editor and then all you have to do is refresh inside MT4 or restart MT5. Now thanks to the Discord page I'm going to show you a better way, in my opinion, a better way to look for indicators. All you want to do is go to the No Nonsense Forex Discord, type in and type the channel. So if you're looking for confirmation indicators, type confirmation indicators and click right has and you can use either link which people will put the links to indicators that they may have tried or the better one is file so then you can download the, the indicators that people have put onto the discord page straight away sometimes people put in multiple indicators at a time or folder indicators yeah i think this is really helpful this is kind of an advanced way and i would recommend you don't just use the discord for your own purposes and you also give back as much as you can if you find something that may be helpful to others. A good thing to do is jump to where they posted it because then you can see all the conversations that other people have in case other people have tested it or have any comments about certain indicators. This is a really useful tool. So you've gotten your indicators now. So put three on your chart and press F11 and Control D to make it full screen and so that you can see the data window. You also want the ATR on your chart and whether that's the line or like I have ATR and pips which you can see in the left in the data window. So for this video I've chosen um, QQE, Qualitative Quantitative Estimation, Absolute Strength Time Frame Indicator and the ARU. All three indicators are on default settings. So for every confirmation indicator I find and I want to test, I'll do two back tests. 
And I recommend you use this method. So the first backtest is a quick test. All we want to know if these indicators will get us into mega trends at a good time and stay in those trends. The reason I look for these big trends first is because this is where we're actually going to make most of our profit. As VP says, the mega trends is where we make our profits and the small wins are what are supposed to mitigate our losses. Essentially, we're trying to be break even or better traders until those larger trends come along. And since we're trend traders, that's where we'll make our profits. This is a fairly easy process, but you'll need to understand how we scale out. So for most of us, instead of opening one trade at full risk, we open two trades at half risk each. Both trades will have an SL of 1.5 times the ATR, and only one trade will have a take profit of one times the ATR. So the other trade can keep running if it's a longer trend. Once the first trade's take profit has been hit, we move the stop loss of the other trade to break even. Now for that trade, we've locked in profit and we no longer have any risk on that currency pair. So all we have to do is zoom out to either six months or about a year on the charts and look for those mega trends. Generally, there'd be at least one good trend a year that you want to be a part of in most currencies. We see if our confirmation indicators get us in at a good time and lets us stay in the trend long term. So the condition for us to stay in the trend long term is after getting into the trend, it will obviously hit our first take profit, which is ATR times one. And at that candle, we'll move our second trade stop loss to break even. We don't ever want price to come back and hit our break even point. A little tip for the future, I usually put my break even point about five pips past the trade open so that if it does hit that break even, you don't lose money in commissions or swaps. Once you do this for the past three years, I usually do four years, but three years is fine. You'll have a really good feel for your indicators and which confirmation indicators perform better than others. and how they actually work rather than if you're just looking at statistics. And knowing your confirmation indicator gives you a better idea of what kind of C2 or volume or other pieces that you need and whether the algo you're building is slow or fast. Now I've left the background video on normal speed unedited so you can see exactly how I do the trend backtest over four years with three confirmation indicators.
Once you do this for the past three to four years on VPs5, go back and do the normal back tests for each indicator so that you can record the win rate and the number of trades each confirmation indicator gives. Once you have those statistics of the win rate and the trades, you can see how quick these indicators are compared to each other. For instance, the Arun has almost double QQE and Ash have in trades, but it has a lower win rate. From here you can decide if you want a slower or a faster C1. I usually get one with around four to 500 trades because I know that C2 and the volume is gonna filter out a lot of trades. And I usually aim for my entry system to have at least around 100 to 150 trades. I would say that's a slower or a medium algo compared to a lot of other people's. And I personally think that slower algos are better. And now you can choose based on what you've seen on the charts for these indicators and what you see in the stats, which confirmation one indicator that you'd like to use. So purely based off the back tests in this video, Ash seemed to perform best in the trend back test. And I'm quite happy with the normal back test results it got as well with 54.2% win rate and 409 trades over VPs 5. So I'll most likely use Ash for the rest of the algo build as the C1. That's the end of the video. Couple takeaways. Backtesting statistics are good for comparing changes and telling us if the algo could possibly be profitable when traded live. Backtest results don't equal future forward test results. And we make our profits in the big trends. Remember, stats aren't everything, they're only used to compare. My current C1 by itself had a win rate of around, I think 47 it was. So don't get caught up trying to find an 80, 90% win rate C1. They're probably repainters anyways. It's better to keep moving with your algo and improving along the way rather than getting stuck on one piece and trying to make it perfect. Thank you for watching. If this video was helpful to you in any way, please leave a like and subscribe. Let me know if there's any indicators you'd like me to include in the rest of the algo build. And I'll try to get these videos out every Tuesday.